Hello everyone, Namaskar and welcome to the new discussion which we are going to have under this technical communication for engineering for engineers course and that discussion we will concentrate on uh, how to present tables and captions because captions are equally important as tables and also captions are equally important in case of figures also. So, we will try to touch all these aspects in this discussion. As we know that uh, tables and figures are used to display quantitative information. I would repeat the important point is try to display as much as figures instead of table. If a data can be represented in terms of simple figures or graphs, one should prefer that one rather than presenting in form of table. But sometimes they and uh, certain data you do not you may not be having a completely numeric data or a data is altogether a different type which cannot be displayed in any form of graphs or figures then it is fine. So, preference should always be given to graphs, charts, figures uh, because what they are basically uh, bringing out the quantitative information in a understandable easily understandable manner. Sometimes as we have also discussed in case of scatter plots or pie charts or bar graphs that they also brings the relative information. A table one has to go through uh, line by line and row by row and then only one can understand some variations or some relationship between the data. Instead of tables figure should be uh, preferred, but depending uh, whether if you are having that possibility or not. Second point is uh, whenever we are trying to represent or bringing technical information to readers, then uh, we know that it is easy to you know to provide ease for understanding to the reader. We should use the visual elements and uh, the same saying that a picture tells thousand words. So, that is what the that kind of advantage we should take. Sometimes uh, figures and tables do not replace uh, technical information, but rather they make easier for readers to understand large quantities of data. So, uh, they are not really replacing your technical, but uh, they are bringing large quantities of data in a just one plot or one figure. So, now while uh, uh, we organize the data, few important tips or points one should remember. Uh, the first one, if the results can be stated in one sentence, no visual is needed unnecessary over visuals are also not good or under visuals under figures are also no good. A balance has to be stuck. So, if it is possible that you can write in one or two sentences then you do not require any give, uh, figure or graph. If the numbers are more important than, uh, uh, than the trend use a table. If you do not want to show the trend, but uh, numbers are important uh, use a table. And if the trend is more important, then the numbers use a graph. So, here uh, both uh, possibilities are there that uh, use a table because the trend can be shown very clearly, very easily using graphs. And we also know that uh, even for preparing a graph, we have to feed the data in the Excel. So, that, that is a Excel is a table or worksheet that is nothing but a table. So, uh, we, uh, these are quite easily constructed using uh, word processors table function or a spreadsheet program such as Excel. And uh, then uh, uh, because in word or similar kind of word processor softwares a lot of uh, you know analysis of the data, sorting of the data and other things cannot be done. Uh, it is only possible uh, in the uh, worksheet programs like Excel. So, one has to see that uh, what kind of plotting he is going to have. If that is required, it is fine, but only for tables, then you need not to go for Excel, just uh, do create a table using the word processors, whatever the one you are having. Now, uh, but uh, there are few key elements of table, and those are like a legend, you should have a legend uh, for the table or the title, I would say, a more preferable word here. Then uh, column titles, the heading of the column should be there or in case of Excel we say the field values. So, what is whatever the column is there, what is the meaning of that column. Uh, so, that field values are there and then table body that is the quantitative or qualitative data whatever is there and that should come in different rows and columns. So, the first row will be devoted completely for the column title, 
and the uh, top of the table you should have a legend and title. One practice which is followed uh, in almost all publications, thesis, project reports and there that the title of the table would always come at the top or caption if I make it very simple, caption of the table would come on the top where is caption for the figure will come at the bottom or a graph will come at the bottom. But the title one can still have for a table or graph and that is inbuilt in the graphics itself. So, uh, further they uh, these uh, tables also can include subheadings or footnotes as per the requirements. Now, um, it is further important to think about organization of table as it think about the organization of paragraphs. The uh, as they are referred uh, into the text or body of the text the same way they should be organized and uh, uh, within a table the data should also be properly organized and that you may have a kind of sorting for the year if I am saying or minimum value, maximum value likewise. So, the organization uh, of the table is very, very important and uh, if a, a table is well organized which will then allow the readers or audience to grasp the meaning of the data presented with ease very easily because while you, you are making a presentation using PowerPoint, you do not have much time to discuss a table. So, you just show the main points associated with the table or main data and therefore, well organized table would be easy for the audience to understand very, uh, uh, very easily. Otherwise, uh, if you put too much data in one table and showing in one slide in a PowerPoint presentation that may create a confusion among the readers or audience and uh, you will miss the point. Now, the title of the table uh, headed by a number followed by a clear description title or caption. Caption is very much required and before that if there are more than or even there is one table that table number will come and then it is referred whenever in within the text. So, therefore, a number uh, has to be there and uh, uh, in case of thesis uh, a number uh, the num table numbers will come according to the chapter. So, if it is the table is coming in the chapter 2 then and there are various tables. So, that would be 2.1 and so on so forth. So, whenever somebody opens uh, the thesis if he finds a table 2.1 it can very easily be assumed that this, this table belongs to a chapter 2. Similarly, the title will let the reader know that uh, what is the table about through this uh, caption or table title and uh, how it has been organized and that information about the organization of the table or data in the table can also be mentioned within the caption. Now, I always prefer to provide as good information as possible within the caption. And that makes things very clear to the audience or readers. So, one should always try and the same case in case of figures also that uh, the caption which we write in the below describe the figure as much as possible and uh, the caption may be lengthier, but it is really very, very useful for readers. See the whenever somebody is evaluating uh, or going through a document or thesis report what they do as also said in earlier that uh, they read the title if they find interesting they read the abstract keywords introduction and then they start seeing the figures and uh, if they find any figure interesting they will read the caption of the figure. So, if figure uh, does not have much description of that it is uh, not good that the reader may lose uh, the interest in that one. And therefore, it is as per the requirements provide as much as information within the caption of a table or in figure. So, this uh, length uh, and other things uh, as I have already mentioned uh, should be as per the requirement, but preferably more detailed information uh, is always uh, good. Descriptive, it should be descriptive, explanatory and uh, whatever the interpretation of data is there that can also be provided in the captions and uh, see the good practice is to see examples from published papers, public books and I will give you an example from a published book uh, that is by S. Drury, Remote Sensing Geology and if you open his book you would find that 
every figure image is having quite good descriptive good explanation about figure or image and so you just read the see the figure read the caption you know what what he would be talking in the text and if i am further interested then i will read the text which is printed in the surrounding or a previous page or later page so tables are read from the top down and remember this thing therefore titles should go first in the body of the table that is why the caption of the table comes in the top caption for a figure comes at the bottom now the goal of column headings that is the field headings field declaration and that is simply and clarify the table a, if it is a given say one column is having age then age is days in months or years that a unit should also be there and uh, so that the uh, reader can understand uh, these things or the details or columns or components of a table quite easily and so the title should be of course this applies for everything and uh, should have units all the time if uh, the data is having units must mention units in the uh, column of the uh, table for each column and uh, uh, or the characteristics if you don't have the numeric data then you can write the characteristics uh, of the uh, you know heading for the uh, column uh, so now about the remaining part of the table so it should be the body of the table that it should be organized in a way that helps the reader to understand the significance of the data and uh, of course uh, first you think that how reader will compare and uh, will interpret will understand that table and accordingly you should uh, try and the best practice is try two three times to prepare table or organize the data within the body of the table and see which one is more convincing uh, to is going to be more convincing in the users because what we are trying between different columns we will be or the reader will be comparing the data so in that way one has to organize the body of the table and uh, if a uh, numerical data is there if it is possible to plot prepare a graph if it is not then one has to make if it is in decimals having some certain precision say two places of decimal then each uh, row values should have the same decimal you may have even 00 0.00, 00 something like that but they will look uh, more organized way rather than just uh, you know haphazard way and uh, in some case you are typing just one place of decimal value one in some case you are not typing in some case you are typing two uh, decimal places this is not good keep the consistency uh, within this precision of your num numeric value and uh, uh, if uh, if there are whole numbers means no real numbers without any decimals then whole numbers should be lined up on the right side of the column and uh, sometimes table may be more appropriate for displaying data than a graph sometimes only i always prefer that if it is possible to present through a graph one should do where the tables are great for displaying multiple variables specific values and comparing categories but if you are having too many rows then again tables are not uh, preferable and uh, also table will often require an audience to look up specific information to understand the data so picture is more uh, or a graph would be more logical to put rather than a table but again it will depend on what kind of data uh, you are having and what kind of information you would like to share with the audience or readers and uh, therefore that should be done again these points are coming that neat and logical manner so everything should be prepared whether it is a table or graph it is also important that all raw data should not be added to the table only the relevant data which has been discussed in the body of the text of your manuscript paper or thesis that data only should come the raw data which you might have collected but you have processed the data so don't bring that data in your table and the same thing is also for the graphs that uh, one need to consider the message in the data that to be communicated what do you want to communicate what do you want to convince the audience and accordingly one should choose if you have done a statistical analysis and then uh, the data may be performed or summarized 
uh, in the results section of your work or manuscript paper and uh, then you can use a again a table to inform about uh, that particular information. Now, this is another important thing it is possible nowadays uh, using our word processors or whatever. So, if, if someone has to really present a large tables then alternate shading pattern uh, for columns and rows uh, is important. So, that uh, one can really understand in a very effective manner. So, finally, for this uh, section of this discussion the common features of a table I am giving an example uh, that uh, what we are having and uh, the column heads are there and there are each column is further divided. So, they are they, that information is there for year wise and 2014, 15 in row, row section you are having the parameters or characteristics and then you are giving these values and of course, the numeric values are fed here. Also try to see what is the caption of the table as said it has to come on the top part and uh, this should be uh, neatly aligned labeled columns with no guidelines and uh, uh, the units or percentage whatever is there if required some information you want to add additional information then you can have a footnote for this using an asterisk and then showing that the footnotes explain the parameters or statistical significance. So, this is one of the good examples of uh, showing and uh, data is not cluttered the entire space has been used and comparison between 3 years uh, between these uh, characteristics the number of nest, nest hatching and other things is coming quite clearly here. So, that is one of the best one of the best way of. And now, uh, once we see the good example we also would like to see the bad example. I always prefer to see the good example first and then bad. So, that one can really compare what what went wrong in the bad example. So, first of all the the title or caption is really bad table number 1 does not say anything. So, there has to be a colon and then lot of information related with this table should have come here. A rest of the things are all right, but it is incomplete things are not preferred. Secondly, uh, this the division between these boundaries should have been shifted. So, that uh, we, we are having just uh, uh, one line row like this and then uh, uh, these gaps are not also like. So, it is a poorly organized uh, table. This is poor example or bad example uh, table lacks a complete title and uh, the sources of information is not provided. The row title straddles two lines as I have just uh, mentioned each cell is bounded uh, as if in a spreadsheet and uh, the alpha uh, alphabetical listing of regions could have been better uh, for any understanding or searching for the information. So, that is also missing this has been sorted out based on the region in alphabetical order that should have been a, a better way of representing data. Now, let us see the almost the same data is being presented here through a uh, the information that uh, this is the title of the table and uh, though the size of font is different, but just I wanted to highlight this part. So, that uh, not instead of just writing table 1 and leaving as it is, it is giving full information about the data which is inside the body of the table. So, it is giving the information and then the same data is represented here in a nice manner, uh, so that one can easily understand and uh, looks also good compared to the previous bad example. Now, I would show you the uh, examples uh, from uh, published tables or data or tables which have been published in literature. This is from our own uh, uh, publication as you can see that uh, there are multiple columns are there each column is having information plus table also say uh, the details of studied earthquakes and then these 3 earthquakes have been uh, their details have been shown here the date time their let long geographic location magnitude focal depth all this thing. So, once this data because this data and cannot be represented easily in the line graph or pie chart. So, therefore, uh, the decision was to have a table and that becomes much easier and uh, then you can uh, see that what is uh, happening here 
and uh, this uh, the sorting is here is with the less magnitude first and large magnitude uh, later that has been shown here. Some sorting, some organization has to be there. Another example of uh, you know uh, the data is here and uh, that we are showing the thermal infrared anomaly from a different uh, or the same publications. So, in here we have added the magnitude focal depth and uh, then pre earthquake rise the same earthquakes are here and uh, the title or caption is also having full details. So, this is the best way of showing the data in form of uh, tables. So, tables uh, may be uh, centered on the page and uh, this is what uh, publications prefer, prefers or in thesis or reports uh, one should do it. Tables and figures are numbered independently in the sequence in which they are uh, referred in the text and start with table 1 and figure 1 of course. Uh, in, in case of thesis in there are chapters. So, if table is coming in chapter 1 uh, or a figure then say 1.1, 1.2 and so on. So, that will automatically indicate that that table or that figure belongs to chapter 1. So, uh, it is acceptable to abbreviate the word figure sometimes you be, you would find uh, uh, in the text uh, or uh, the title you are having just fig and number and but and in case of table tab word cannot be used because it will give a complete different meaning so this should not be abbreviated and uh, labeled with the table number and description title above the table which we have also uh, discussed previously that a title and descriptive title has to be there that is very very useful it is something like a subject line in case of an email or letter similarly here this is the subject line of the table so all columns should be labeled properly if there are some units they should be mentioned in that one uh, like unit of measurements time whatever is there sufficient details should be there against each column of the table that will be always helpful and they uh, set apart from the text itself the text does not flow around the table. So, keep a table and text uh, separately and uh, let the publisher fit a text around it or whatever. In case of thesis, we, uh, we need not to do such things because these can uh, make uh, reading little difficulty. So, uh, table and text can come uh, very separately very easily. Now, we come to the about the figures and figure numbers also. Uh, so, figure numbers can be used as figure 1 or fig 1. Uh, it is uh, important that all figures should have the number, all figures should have the you know they should be referred in the write up, dissertation or rather cited in that and because we would be providing a list of figures uh, before the real text of the paper, uh, thesis comes. The figure numbers is used to allow the audience to find the figures which is have referred in the text. So, uh, proper figure numbers are must. Figure title again uh, the same uh, same conditions that it has to be descriptive or assertive and uh, as uh, much details one can provide needed that should be there. So, the descriptive title briefly describe what figure is displaying, but also lets the reader to identify any trends or relationships and is guided by the text you include in the result section. Because as I have said the reader might read first the figure or go through the figure and the title. If he finds very interesting then he might read the text uh, body of the text in for much detail. Another way of uh, uh, you know writing a title for the figure is assertive. Title can help the audience uh, to quickly identify the key message contained within the figure. But uh, one should be sure that the title does not mislead the audience or overstate the results. It is something like the uh, heading in newspapers that uh, uh, the heading should not mislead. So, here what is the heading of a figure we are talking. So, that should not mislead overstate or understate. Balance has to be there in all such cases. Assertive titles can be used to identify specific trend found in a graph highlight the key message of the diagram. But sometimes say we may write that there is a correlation exists between these two variables, two parameters and the audience finds, reader finds that there is no correlation. 
So, that will come under this over state uh, the results that is not good. So, then the audience may close may not read further and basically you are losing uh, here uh, one of the audiences. So, the example uh, like a descriptive one is the effect of dam construction on uh, fish biodiversity this is a descriptive example and uh, the assertive is the dam construction results in loss of fish diversity fish biodiversity. So, slight change in the wordings can uh, bring a quite good change uh, between these examples. Now, descriptive another example is that high distribution of two eucalyptus grandis plantation in Queensland and uh, the assertive one is uh, figure 2 insects defoliation of uh, eucalyptus grandis reduce canopy height. So, that kind of uh, differentiation is there. I always prefer uh, this kind of uh, tone for a caption of the figure, but uh, it is up to you. Now, descriptive caption example uh, of descriptive caption from one of the publications uh, which is Ramnathan and Ravanna of 2005 and they are showing that uh, see this caption you know it is starts with figure 1 dot 14 and there are two maps wind uh, first is the A is the wind patterns in the month of January, B is the regional distribution of natural anthropogenic aerosol optical depth AOD. And uh, each figure is having their own legend like AOD uh, is there in the right figure, uh, here it is having legend in the left figure and uh, likewise it is there and uh, this uh, data has been from where it has been derived that is also uh, mentioned derived from moderate resolution imaging spectro radiometer that is MODIS instrument on board of Terra satellites December 2002 sorry. So, you are providing the uh, date also therefore, it is very good example of a descriptive caption. Complete relevant details are here including you are having markings of A and B no confusion people can compare people can compare with the wind directions ocean winds direction or ocean currents similarly they can compare with the renal distribution of anthropogenic aerosol optical lot of discussion about uh, the smog over uh, northern India especially over Delhi and uh, even this year we are hearing lot about smog over uh, Mumbai also. And uh, so, uh, if uh, we see the wind direction so uh, these current directions how they are influencing why the concentration of this smog is mainly in the endogenic plane and so on. So, that kind of comparison uh, can be uh, done very easily if we are having such kind of plotting and of course, uh, uh, descriptive captions. Another example is here and uh, this I am talking from a book uh, uh, of Drury I referred back and see that uh, uh, there are two images of uh, shown here of different bands data of land set A shows the patches and B again the band 5 and this is band 7 very clear full description and uh, once you read the entire description or the caption of the figure and go through these images you would be able to understand very nicely. So, basically we are uh, uh, ending this discussion uh, thank you very much namaskar.